Hey guys, what's up? I am back from a long week of exams and ready to continue the Unity series. Now in previous episodes, I was making everything up as I went along. I was improvising because I wanted to show my thought process and how to solve problems and debug when things weren't working. However, as I was filming this episode, I realized my mistakes were getting stupider and stupider. Um, it was more like Googling syntax or forgetting how to do things, just things that were not helpful for you, the viewer, to see. So this time I've completed all of the code and I'm going to walk you through it and hopefully still give you a sense of my thought process and tricky things that might not be intuitive if you're a beginner. So let me know if you preferred my improv style, even if there were some bugs and even if it was a little bit messier, or if you preferred this style, please let me know. I'm adjusting things as I go. All right, let's just jump right in. Open up Unity. I am working in a test scene. You can do uh, scene one, the one that we created, but for now, you could just do a test scene to get an idea. Um, first, make sure if you go to Assets and Resources over here that you have this Dialog1 file. And make sure this is the only file because this is the correct syntax for our dialog that we decided. So remember what it looks like. See if yours looks exactly like mine. And today we are going to make the actual dialog box in the game, where if you click, it cycles through the lines of dialogue that we defined in our file. So to show you what I mean, press play. And so this is kind of like our dialogue box. Uh, we'll change it, but hello, how are you? Fine, thanks, blank. Okay, that's exactly what we want. That's exactly what's in our text file. Now to show you how to do this. Um, first, go to your hierarchy and we're going to make two objects. So right click and create an empty object and then right click and create another empty object and name one of them dialog parser object or just obj is fine and dialog box object. So name your two empty objects. Don't worry about what mine looks like right now and then go to your scripts folder under assets resources scripts. You should have the dialog parser script from the last episode. So click dialog parser object, drag the script just directly down here into the gray space, and this should show up. It should be added as a component. Now create a new script by right clicking in your script folder, create C sharp script, and then name the script dialog box. And then do the same thing, drag dialog box to your dialog box object. Now don't worry about all this stuff here. I'm going to show you right now. So this is all we need to do in our inspector right now. So open up mono develop, open the parser to start with, because there are some adjustments of this. So just to review, remember we have our list of lines that are dialog lines, a structure we define that has a name, content, and pose. So each item of this list is a dialog line structure. And in our initialization, everything's basically the same, but make sure this says dialog1, or at least it points to the file with the correct syntax, the updated syntax from the fix in the last episode. And then Make sure to instantiate the lines list. I believe I didn't do that before, which is my mistake. So be sure that you instantiate it as a new list before you call load dialog. So make sure you have this. And then these are the only new functions. So these are what are called getters. And the purpose of this is to get variables that the parser has generated in the lines list. Now, why can't we just have your dialog box just grab it from parser? Why do we need these functions? Well, hopefully we will go more into design as we continue, more into programming design specifically, but these are how classes 
are abstracted. These are how classes stay organized and purposeful. If you have one class or one script doing too many things, then it's poor design. You, it's much more readable if the parser only has functions related to parsing your text file and if the dialog box is only related to showing the dialog. So this helps create that layer of abstraction between them. And hopefully you'll see what I mean as we move forward. So first we have public string get name and it takes a line number, an integer. And we say if the line number is less than the number of lines in our list, then we can return the name. And so this is just saying if the line number is going past what we have in our list, we don't want to return anything. We're going to return a blank. And so when I showed the example earlier, when I kept clicking after the dialogue ended, it only showed a blank. So make sure you have this for your git name. And then it's the exact same thing for git content, except you return lines of line number dot content. Now git pose is also basically the same, but it's a public int. And you're going to return zero as the default since we set zero to be our default pose. So make sure you have these functions and everything else is the same. We have our dialog loading, we have our regular expressions splitting. Yeah. So that's all for the parser. Now we're going to move to the dialog box. Now this will be a blank screen for you, so don't feel overwhelmed by what I have. But first we are going to uh, declare some members. So just look at these four for now. We're going to want to have a reference to the parser in the other script. We're going to have a string called dialog that will store the current line that we're displaying and the current line number. You can ignore this for now, but type it in, just declare it. It's our GUI style. And in the start function where we are initializing everything, have our current dialog be just a blank. So when the screen loads, it'll start as a blank. And then our parser, the way we grab it, the way we grab this object so that the dialog box can look at it, is we use a Unity function called find. So if you say gameObject.find and type in the name, notice the name of the object is different from the script. This by itself will only return the game object of this dialog parser object. What does that mean? That means it'll get attributes that are common to all game objects, such as the position, the rotation, um, tags. That's uh, common between all game objects. But this by itself will not be of type parser. So whenever you want to grab a script or anything unique to an object, you say dot get component and then you can type in the script in between these uh, brackets or uh, less than greater than signs. So this is how we get our dialog parser. This is how we get a reference to it. And then our first line number will just be zero because that's where we will always start. Now in update, this is how we get our click input. So update means it's constantly checking for whatever you're putting inside of it. So in this case, it's constantly checking if it has an input of the left mouse button going down. So zero, this get mouse button down zero means get the left mouse button down. If you put a one, it means right click. So for now, we are just going to have input on left click. You could also say um, or input dot get button down and maybe we say uh, space. I forget the exact unity syntax. You might have to look up how they have names of keys, but you could do that as well and have a space bar work exactly the same way. So we have our click input and when we click, 
we want it to call our function we just made. We want it to get the content of the current line number, which is starting with is starting with zero. And then we increment it one more so the next time we click, it'll be at the next line. Now remember how we protected against going past the number of lines we have with these if statements. So it'll just keep incrementing. And there's a better way to do this, but for now it works. It'll keep incrementing, but it will always return blanks no matter how many times you click. So that's how we display each line, or that's how we update each line on a click. Now, finally, the last component of the dialog box is this magical Unity function called onGUI. Now, make sure it's void, and you say capital O, lowercase n, and then capital GUI. This is this strict syntax is because it is a Unity function. It's not something we are implementing. So remember we have our string dialog up here that stores our current line that we want to display. So we say dialog equals and then a GUI text field. And this takes a rectangle that defines our text box, the string to display, and then the style from up here. And so you can put whatever parameters you want for the rectangle. I did these because it worked with this size screen, but feel free to play around with it. I believe this is the left corner. Um, this defines the upper left corner of the rectangle, and then these define the size of it. So feel free to play around. And so this just shows the dialogue in the text box we've defined using our custom style. So let's go into the custom style now. So click on your dialog box object, and now you should have what I have. You should have all of this stuff. Um, all we need to worry about right now is you can have a background if you want. I used a particle effect as a background, but we're totally going to change it. Um, pick whatever you want, even add your own. And then you can set the text color here to red, blue. I like white for the default Unity background. But then one thing that's really important, if you don't do anything else, you must change the font. So click here, and this will be set to none for you. You need to set it to the default, at least Arial. Or you can, if you have files of other fonts, you can just drag them in here and import them and choose any font you like. But for now, in order for the text to display, you have to choose at least Arial. And then define your size. I checked off the word wrapping and rich text. And that's all you need to have your text display with the um, your custom style. But I highly encourage you to play around with it because this is how you can create really nice looking text boxes and dialogue. All right, so that's really all we need to do to get everything running. And so I'll demo it one more time. Hopefully you have what I have. So it's a blank, we click. Hello, how are you? Fine, thanks. And then a blank, more clicked, more blanks. All right, now the true test is opening up our dialog and adding lines to show that it doesn't matter how many lines we type, this will always work. So let's have David ask, how is your cat? And just keep a default pose. And then she says, he's so happy. <laughs> My dumb jokes. But anyway, let's test this out. Feel free to type whatever you want as well. And we click, hello, how are you? Fine, thanks. How is your cat? He's so happy. All right, so we've shown that this will work for any amount of dialogue. And this is really awesome because it means we basically have half the game programmed. A visual novel is really cycling through text. And at this point, uh, adding the name and adding back and forward buttons are kind of trivial, right? Because we have a way to keep track of all this in our parser. And this is the value of well-organized code. I'm not saying my code is the best in the world, but um, 
you can see how powerful just a few simple functions are. So in the next episode, we will fully flesh this out and have buttons and show how you can change different text files for different scenes. I hope this was helpful to some of you. I know that Unity is actually quite easy, but it can be really difficult when you're starting out because there's so many resources that it's hard to know which one will actually get you a result. So I hope these are helping people out and showing you the fundamentals of how things fit together. Let me know if you like this style of video or if you preferred the more improv ones. I, for one, see the value in coding together rather than me giving a tutorial. Anyway, give me any feedback, any questions you have. I love talking to you guys and I'll see you guys soon.